and shall be deep with someone nice as you. We need more tank girls and jet girls to take care of shit, right? Yeah, we 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 have not we have not completed it. Yes, thank you, folks. For <laughs> we are uh, this is another episode of the VD Clinic. Happy Thanksgiving, right? Exactly. Yeah, um, we are covering 1995's Tank Girl. I'm Vanessa, and with me, as I always, is the Darren. Is the Darren. The Darren. Yeah. 2033 is right around the corner. Well, you know, I was thinking that as we watch, well, yet another dystopian movie, because we apparently are all about that around this place. And... Yeah. <laughs> It takes place in 2033, and it says that it hasn't rained in 11 years. So that means next year we are going to have that comet, and we are going to be without rain, which I wouldn't I wouldn't find hard to believe considering how bad the drought was here in the United States for so much of 2021. Yeah. I mean, out in the Northwest and all just all along, actually, the Pacific Coast. It's, you know, not the usual spots in California. It just extended. It was so bad. So I wouldn't find this hard to believe. It, Yeah. And I also would not find it hard to believe that a it, it would probably be Disney or Nestle. I, right now, our counterpart that controls all the water in America tends to be Nestle. So, a corporation well, controlling the one resource. Coca-Cola does own Dens Dasani. Oh. Which, how can you call that water? Uh, it tastes terrible. Uh, I'll have a Coke and a smile, but I will not have some Dasani water. <laughs> <laughs> that stuff tastes funny. I it's, I don't drink that kind of bottled water unless I am out somewhere and I need a water and I don't have one. So if I remember correctly, that stuff sort of tastes a little salty, right? It They put something in it and I do not know what it is. Okay. Uh, I don't know, but it doesn't taste right to me. So... I'm one of those, I'm not a water snob. I don't have to have something fancy, but just, I mean, something that tastes, you know, like water. <laughs> that would be cool. And, and Poland Spring to me is, not to throw around brand names, but that is a much more like generic, it's better than tap water, but it's close enough, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's also less expensive. So, because why does your water need to be expensive? Water should be free. Thank you. Controversial statement. Clean well, water should be free. That's the, let's put it that way. Because we've already jumped into this movie. <laughs> we have. That's, that's how we do. Yeah. We were already kind of talking about this a little before we started recording. But... Yeah, I'm going to go on record and just say clean water should be free to all. It should you shouldn't have to if it comes in a bottle like I don't know. It's just ridiculous that I mean maybe if you want to charge something for it, charge like the 5 or 10 cents for the physical plastic bottle that it comes in. Right. And the cost. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if we <laughs> and the cost to make it, not the right. cost of the or the cost Malcolm of McDowell's the labor. Pay. Like the cost the base cost of labor. 
You know what I mean? To get the people, I mean, that's all I'm saying. Because you want to make sure the people who are getting it in the bottles, you know, are getting comp fairly compensated. But you, on top of that, you do not need a profit. <laughs> like, it shouldn't be that way. Except and for also, Johnny Profit. But that will come later. You know, where places where people live should have clean water. I'm to, I'm to, I'm calling out like a Flint, Michigan, or something like that, or some of the uh, American, you know, Native American reservations, like what our federal government has done, like on that base need of clean water. It's kind of, it's pretty fucked up. Are you a communist? I might be, <laughs> but. I, you want people to not get sick from drinking water? I, and you I, want Is that such a crazy idea? I don't think it is. <laughs> well, I watched I watched a <laughs> I watched a nine and a half hour Kevin McCarthy rant that would beg to differ. No, I actually didn't. I've been working on not watching so many of that, so much of that. But yeah. I think if you want to help people, that makes you a a communist, socialist, leftist, Marxist, oh, Antifa. I well, I don't know about all of that, but I at least follow under some of those the umbrella or umbrellas. I know. Oh, the umbrella corporation. See, she admitted it, everybody. Right here. Vanessa works for water and power. As no, I don't a, work for that. As a as a deep state counter agent. No. But really, reeling it back in. Reeling it back in. Reeling it back in. I just had to go on my water rant because I really thought about that today, um, particularly as it is also... I started thinking about the timing of this movie and then also it's um, Indigenous Peoples Month. So... It, you know, I just started thinking about all these different issues and I'm kind of like, oh, my God, I know it's just a co it's, it's a comic based movie, but. I mean, comics address a lot of big issues, comics address a lot of sociopolitical issues, but. I mean, they do call Johnny Prophet, you know, they do say Jesus Christ at one point. When they exclaim, you know, something has happened to him. Like, that's not obvious. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, and not like calling him Johnny Prophet isn't kind of obvious as well. But. <laughs> oh, this movie. I don't. I, I, any excuse to talk about this movie, but it is. A, Me too. I, I love this movie since it came out i saw it in the theater i think yeah twice maybe but i know i at least saw it once in the theater oh that would be fun and i had a best friend that i saw it with and she called me tank and i called her jet it was oh <laughs> yeah and we'd go and we were like on our little punk like right girl whatever misadventures with the lesbian avengers <laughs> around cincinnati <laughs> it was a fun time and this you know this it's like such a nostalgia for me with this soundtrack it has such a good soundtrack yeah it does of the mid 90s oh i mean you have portishead you have hole you have bush York. you have you have Ice T, L7, Bjork, um, Devo, Paul Westerberg, and Joan Jett. I mean, who else? Uh, I mean, I know a lot of Veruca Salt fans out there. If you yeah, mention them. Um, yeah, but yeah, Bjork and Joan. Yeah, Joan Jett, especially. I think that's. 
I don't know if that's the first time I heard Joan Jett because my dad or my dad could have very well listened to Joan Jett, but mm-hmm. um, I I definitely heard this before I had ever ever heard any of the Runaways. But yeah, I mean, fucking Ice T in the movie. I think he said he got paid a million dollars. Um, eight hundred thousand. Was it eight hundred thousand? Okay, he told somebody on uh, a YouTube video I watched that it was a million. No, he, he was, was on talking he was about on, he was on some talk show and they were making fun of him about it. And he said, "Hey, I got paid this, you know, whatever eight hundred thousand to be in it," and they shut up immediately. <laughs> They okay. were kind of like, okay, good on you. Sorry, our bad. <laughs> this was another one where he was talking about how he wasn't getting paid any money to do things. And people were like, man, you haven't really done anything. And he's mm-hmm. like, and then I got Tank Girl was the yeah. first time I get paid. Really? Well, because he had his part in New Jack City, which was his first time playing a cop, by the way, it wasn't a big role. I mean, what was it? Crush Groove? <laughs> he was in not a oh, big paying role. I think so, yeah. Um, I do, even though we do love Ice T and, you know, Crush Groove, OG, yeah, Ice T. Um, but then after this, I think it was there maybe when did Leprechaun, Leprechaun in the Hood come out? Oh, man. That wasn't. You a know, big I watch it all the either. time. <laughs> was that a '90s movie? Yeah. Okay, that might have been '90. Oh wait, no. Wait, or was that Leprechaun in the Hood? Two thousand uh, is two thousand. I had yeah. to look it up because I was I was agreeing too easily. I was like, you know what? I don't know. I'm it, ask I my couldn't computer. remember. I couldn't remember if it was before or after he got the Law and Order SVU gig. Uh, you know his next time playing a cop <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i like which iced tea on twitter up, also which pr- i love i love me some iced tea but bringing up law and order svu i listened to this podcast about law and order svu um yeah don't ask but they have interviews on there with some of the people who've been in um you know on on there and the actor who plays booga in here yeah um was on an episode of law and order svu oh that's neat yeah with ice tea (laughs) but it was years that you know obviously years after they did tank girl now did you say that you've read the comics before you just didn't get a chance to read any before the show so I have read some of the comics before, but it was years ago. And now this time I had totally intended to do it, but I wanted to get the hard copy. And especially when I saw that the Kindle copy was going to be the same price. So, um, yeah, and it hasn't arrived yet. Thank you, Amazon. I don't know what, and I guess maybe, you know, I I don't think I waited that long to order it, but... I don't know where it's coming from, but it's taking longer than usual. So I will report back to you once I get the comic. <laughs> <laughs> but, because uh, I do totally fully intend on reading it this time. Don't don't get me wrong. But it was, it was a fun read. But Booga yeah. is her boyfriend sometimes in the comic. Right. Okay. Well, he, that was well, that was where I was coming from with that question. Yeah. Well, they're together in this. Yeah, eventually. Like, the, they, they have the Eventual, meet cute eventually. In, the, in this movie. Yeah. This is where they meet, yeah. And speaking of Ice-T, what are they, it's like when they're talking about how they were all reincarnated, it's like, what did you used to be? A cop. I know. <laughs> it's, it's fucking, I, it, even under all those prosthetics, done by Stan Winston, by the way, I didn't notice that until I was watching for the show. For half uh, price. He did half price? Yeah. Wow. He, his crew, it, whatever, he and his crew, they did them for half price, like, as a favor. 
That's so cool. It, it was a, it sound sounding more and more like a punk rock aesthetic production a little bit. Well, and then first. you look at how many women were on the crew. Like Catherine Hardwick, who ended up going on to direct like, okay, Twi Twilight, which I, I'm not into, but she uh, directed 13 Lords of Dogtown. Like she's, you know, Miss Bala, like she's done like some good indie stuff. Um, but she was unknown at this time, but she was, you know, doing production design. I mean, the the costumes are fantastic. Yes. You know, the uh, hair, it gets like the aesthetic, I feel, of the comic. Like, it really captures it. It, it very much does come off as a good representation of a comic book movie. And I think when it came out, same with Not the a editing. lot of Americans had been, yeah. And um, oh, cinematographer Gail Tattersall. She did The Commitments, which is a, a movie I really love. I don't know if you've seen that. Um, ages ago. Okay. And like over a hundred episodes of that house show. Which was a good show. Uh, and and I have to say, I mean, we'll get into the cast in a minute. But I'm just saying behind the scenes, like you had some pretty good stuff. And it's well known that the studio really fucked with the script. And neither the writers nor the director were happy with it. And they still pulled off a pretty cool movie. I think so, too. I mean, I know this movie doesn't, like, I feel like this movie doesn't get a lot of love. Oh, I must have bubbled myself. It's like, oh, you don't like Tank Girl? Get out of my life. Or there are I... people are like, or people just haven't heard of it. Mm. Uh, yeah. You know. I, I feel like it doesn't get a lot of play, and I feel like... Yeah. Uh, when people talk about Lori Petty, who, yeah, we'll, we'll, like we said, we'll get into the cast and everything, but I, I feel like... Well, I was going to say, we can get into the cast now if you want. Okay. Uh, like, But, yeah, Lori Petty as I Tank Girl, I always, fell in love with her automatically. Yeah, I have always loved Lori Petty from the very first role I saw her in. I forget it was before it was even before a league of their own. Was it in the army now? When was that? No, no, no. That was after this. Oh, was it? Um, yeah. Point it break. It was no. No, it that's was... the first thing that I really remember her from. It was like it might have even been some TV work she did in the yeah. Hmm. Or something like re, you know early in her career very early in her career like i said and and um yeah i've just always loved her i still love her um and she's still this kind of crazy punk rock woman like <laughs> yeah she has a fun instagram did, did you like, see it's 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 a great mix of like punk rock craziness and then also just very zen peacefulness and i'm like <laughs> okay i dig that you have that balance that's that i need more people like that in my life <laughs> yeah this uh the, the, her surfer tank girl living together uh, yeah. uh, harmoniously yeah um because <clears throat> yeah she uh did you see her and malcolm mcdowell I found this clip of them on Good Morning America going around promoting the movie. No. It was getting ready to come out. Oh, it was it was pretty fun. Um I he, he was talking about how she came to the audition dressed as Tank Girl. <laughs> and, and just said me. I am Tank Girl. Yeah. And <laughs> uh, they they had a good rapport which I think is really cool for the 
antagonist and the protagonist to have, but he he was talking about the, he was talking about how much uh, they all liked the soundtrack, but he was sounding a little old talking yeah. about it. He's like, "What do you call it? Do, is it called the grunge or something like that?" And Laurie Petty was just sort of busting his balls, and he's like, "Oh, shut up!" And uh, they seem like they had a blast together making yeah. making the movie. And he said he yeah, doesn't want well, his mom to see it. Yeah, and Malcolm McDowell. Oh my God! I mean, I've again another one that I've always loved. Uh, you know, and he said this kind of had some of the just cha the chaoticness and fun, even though I'm sure it was a different kind of fun. But he compared it in a way to to a Clockwork Orange, to some of that vibe. I could see that. I could see and that. And I can it, totally it, see it, even though you're not dealing with the obsessiveness of Stanley Kubrick. <laughs> well, right. But uh, did, did you say you read Clockwork Orange? Yes. Before? So, you know, that chapter that they leave out of the movie where he's yeah. gone more corporate, but he's still a psycho. Mm -hmm. I can see. Easily, I could see that this. What is his character's name? Alex. No, in uh, Tank Girl. Sorry. Oh, Tank uh, Tank Girl Kessley. Kessley. I could totally see Kessley being an evolution of Alex. There's still that maliciousness, but he's older yeah. and more, a little bit more in control. He does almost lose himself. You know, he's having the battle of wills with Tank Girl. Yeah. Um. But I could see that being an evolution of what Alex would become if he stayed in the corporate world. Yeah. I mean, he would go, he would, go he would move from Patrick Bateman to Kesley. There you go. Don't you think that's a natural succession? Because Patrick Bateman would, it's that 80s kind of corporate greed and that. 20s to 30s kind of thing that Alex would be going through or or even 30s to 40s and then Kesley would be 40s 50s kind of you know Easily. early 60s moving into that age but still it's it's a more you're still conniving and Machia Machiavellian you know sociopath um <laughs> i would have killed me before doing it right it, but Shit and you like just that. but you know how to control it in a different way and you know how to make it work for you and you don't have to hide it as much and you can get away with not hiding it <laughs> yeah he's, he's made it to the very top he can in show exactly how ruthless he is Oh, he's such a good villain. He uh, is. He really, really is. He really is. And then, I mean, he, well, he's always a great baddie anyway. Yeah. No matter what film it is. I mean, there are so many times over the years. And, but, I mean, Lori Petty does have such a, you know, kind of this flare of anarchy, <laughs> you know, and then even Naomi Watts playing Jet Girl, who is more, you know, shy, introverted, and controlled, she's still got this rebellion kind of there too. And once, you know, she gets around Tank Girl kind of brings it forth. Yeah. And the two of them work, bit. you know, balance each other out, you know, very well to kind of infiltrate and bring, you know, Kesley down. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there are a lot of one liner. She it's the the script is very comic book. Right. And I like that they integrate the comic book panels that sort of look like the a lot of them were most of them seem to have been based on 
the colorized versions of the early comics that they put out, mm -hmm. when, which is uh, what we were going to read, where they were like, well, we wanted to have it in color. We just couldn't afford to. Right. Here we colored in this stuff. And then there's the newer Tank Girl comics that I haven't delved that much into because I wanted to rebuild my base. Mm -hmm. before it before i moved on but the like the scene near the end where uh tank girl and jet girl are just doing all that cool shit with their tanks and stuff and she's got the the rocket bra and all that stuff yeah. looks a little bit more like the newer comic stuff right uh, but i mean tank girl's wit I think they really nailed the her sense of humor mm -hmm. from you know my limited experience with with the comics. Well, in uh, the comic, the comic is Australian. It's set in Aus like dystopia Australia, but it's got a Brit mix with it. Right. Uh, so it, it's got the, a uh, artists it's, were British, but yeah, yeah. yeah but I'm saying it's not american to begin with but when you see the movie you see what looks to be like the remnants of the golden gate bridge for instance yeah i would say me? especially in the 90s a lot of americans wouldn't recognize an australian landmark maybe yeah. maybe that maybe the uh, opera the, house yeah well that, was that the sydney opera house yeah yeah maybe that but yeah, it was Maybe. sort of like, well, we have to, we've got a, was it MGM? Yeah. Uh, well, we've got a- MGM, gotta, United Artists. Yeah. We've got American up a, a little bit. That's why Tank Girl doesn't have an Australian accent. Although um, there are scenes where she puts accents on that are <laughs> kind of British, um, you know, and she is wearing some Ben Sherman type stuff like that, uh, the Target shirt. Yeah. That's whatever. That's a classic Ben Sherman uh, shirt, which is British designer. I think Uga wears one I, or the I same think, one. And I think some, later. and I think some, I think they have some of the rippers in it too. Yeah. I mean, like, that's like more of a cultural thing it's subtle but even like i noticed that and i'm like okay yeah you're you've got some of that you but you've got some of the i mean language the shirts that the kids wear in the beginning like sam she's wearing a t-shirt that says wanker and the little boy that she's running around their house with is wearing a shirt that says bullocks i think uh, okay and i know tank girl aka rebecca because we do find out her first name in this is like she you know we'll say bullocks and i mean like uses more british slang sometimes so this is the script isn't totally devoid of that it's just you don't really have the accent, but then, okay, Malcolm McDowell is British because, well, also British, you know, if you have a, a villain, it always is great if they have a British accent. It just makes sense, right? I mean, that's so many American movies. Yeah. It's got to be British or Russian-ish. <laughs> right, right, exactly. But it's 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 always got, it's usually British accent for some, it, I don't know where that ever came from that mentality you know but i know it's that sense of otherness you know yeah. but why is it so often specifically just british well and i think sometimes it helps w it, with the shorthand especially back then in a movie where the rich and powerful you know the british accent especially yeah. a malcolm mcdowell type british accent <laughs> right signifies a bit more pomp and circumstance to True. an average it's American not a reader. cockney accent <laughs> <laughs> yeah if he ran around like uh oh shit what's his name that's in like pulp fiction and stuff um or uh, the guy oh, when he uh, goes, what's it oh yeah uh what's his name tim roth 
Yeah, if if you go to Tim Roth's accent in Pulp Fiction or or, or Reservoir Dogs, <laughs> yeah, and, or when he changes in Hateful Eight to his regular character, character, right? Right. Like, wait, wait, wait. It's water and power. It, <laughs> it would be a little bit different, right? But yeah, just I mean, and I, I, uh, God, what's his fucking name? Mal I just keep wanting to call him Alex or Malcolm McDowell. Kesley. Kesley. Is it's fine always... if you call him if you call him if you call him Malcolm or Alex, I will still get who you mean. <laughs> you will allow it. I, I try to use the proper names so I don't drive you crazy. <laughs> uh, but uh, if we've established that, that's okay. So uh, also Kesley is always wearing very clean looking suits, which also means you need the water and I... a lot of white early on, especially. Well, it's it's impeccably tailored. And the clean suits, it's not just about washing them and keeping them clean, but the cut of those means you need to have them pressed. So in order to steam them correctly, you need more water. Yeah. And uh, I don't and know. If that is an absolute luxury. When you're drinking people's blood water. I, that is so neat, but so fucked up at the same time. And you have to wonder. I mean, they've got little <laughs> handheld ones. You have ones. to wonder. <laughs> they've have to got wonder a, a lot. They had to have started with a more crude, bigger machine. That probably fit more people and got less water and they've developed it down to the, you know, the iPhone 15 of blood water extraction <laughs> things where, it, it, yeah, it looks really cool. Although they do need to fix that one thing where when he goes to take the, the bottle off, it's not sealed. So he, he also loses a couple at least a couple gulps we would say of water de disconnecting it from the person's back yeah so they 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 do need that will that would have been spoiler alert that would have been the next development in, in that <laughs> technology but yeah it's just brutal and i let the love the special effects of the you know imagining a, in a comic book way what a body might look like when all the water's gone or when the water is getting sucked out. Mm -hmm. uh, that was just a cool little effect that it was, you know, freaky when I was younger, but then just sort of thinking about it and all the things behind it and wondering, is it warm or does the machine cool it? When So that is exactly my thought is that that has to be some warm water. It's coming out of a human body like that quickly. I mean, I I didn't think about there actually being a a coolant because it's such a compact device, but maybe. That's, but that's my first thought is immediately was, yeah, that's some warm water. Some that warm doesn't water. seem very good, but <laughs> I but guess when water scarce, making. yeah. <laughs> I guess when water scarce, it doesn't matter. Yeah, uh, they they don't have the suits like in the Dune movie. That recycle your urine right um yeah i mean just water uh, also i didn't really think about it that club later on with pedophile iggy pop it's called liquid silver that's got to be a slang mm -hmm. term for water right yeah yeah totally over my head until yesterday <laughs> it's like oh liquid silver that sounds like a douchey club that people would hang out at it's a douchey club name, but yeah, it's, it, I mean, they've got like water beds throughout it. They've People got the pool area yeah. where, and okay, I am a fan of the musical number, not just because it's Cole Porter, Let's Do It, which is one of my favorite Cole Porter songs. And I do love Cole Porter, by the way. Is um, it really that old? <laughs> What is that? Is that song really from the 1930s? 28. 1928. Yep. 
Yeah. The uh, I yes. I, yes, I like, and well, it, it, there are many verses to it, and it depends on what era you're in to see how censored it is. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was not necessarily that censored to begin with. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> First time I heard the Joan Jett cover, and I knew that it, it was a cover, I was like, oh, they had to raunch it up a little bit. Not really. Nope. But anyway, you're talking about the song and dance number that definitely would have been in a Tank Girl comic book if it isn't somewhere that I haven't and, seen. And for me, Anne Magnuson as the madam there was just, it's a slice of joy. Anne Magnuson is one of those actresses, artists, singers that pops up in the strangest places and i just i just love her she was in that band bong water was she yes okay and i don't know if she yeah she, yeah she was one she was i think the lead singer and you know she's been in movies like the hunger she was a victim in that um and she was in de like desperately seeking Susan. I mean, a lot more. I think things popped up in the eighties. Uh, making Mister nope. Right, Cabin Boy. Oh yeah, she's she's. Oh, I love her in Cabin Boy. One day we will get to that. <laughs> um, That's why I pointed that out. Yes, yes, she plays Kali in that. Um. Uh, yeah, and but and she was in that movie making Mister Right with Mal, uh, M John Malkovich. Oh, she was Moira in Clear and Present Danger. Yeah, and then she had some sort of TV series that I remember in the like early nineties, I think. Neat. I don't know, but she, yeah, she just pops up a bunch of different places and. And she performs on stage doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And I, I just kind of love her. Yeah, speaking of this, this cat. She's like that quirky, sexy, like that, I, you know, just, and I'm just, you're like, I would bet you would have an interesting conversation with her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, she did a lot of TV. Oh, she's on two episodes of. Picard and I really need to get caught up on Man in the High Castle. She's on a handful of those episodes. Yeah, I mean she's still around doing things. It's she's just kind of one of those faces you see, you know, here and there. And yeah. Uh, while we're still on the cast, I Doug saw Jones. Yes, as additional ripper. I saw that in the credits yesterday. Mm -hmm. I never realized that. I don't and know I guess, who he would have been, well, but well, because they had so they had about I think they said they had eight rippers, and they designed it so that four of them were like principals. Which was the Ice T, Booga, the Jack Kerouac one. Can we can we say that? That's awesome. Yeah. And then what's his name? Bob Smith from the Tire Place in Cincinnati, Ohio. <laughs> 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 and then so they had those that were the principals. So they used, and this is also the how they cut down costs on the Ripper, you know, and effects and stuff they only had them with their faces be able to work in like on the actors faces like for individual expressions the oh. other four that are like more background you know they had mechanical faces so they you know it was cheaper to do that than to make prosthetic all the individual prosthetics for each of their faces too. But you still see them in the shots of them when they're fighting and when they're dancing 
or praying rather <laughs> their version of praying in the bowling alley. <sighs> I love that they're hanging out in the bowling alley. So many cool little things in this movie. I think just throwing that out there, I'm sure it's been mentioned before, but the cat that lives in my house with me is named Tank Girl. Yes. And that's partly because her name at the shelter was Rebecca. And she was young and scrappy. And uh, Amanda was, this was at a, cat cafe shelter so it was like a no a no kill shelter where you went and paid to drink coffee and just have cats all around you and she was trying to find she wanted to find a a cat that could handle living in our house with a pit bull and a baby a toddler yeah and the woman was like no not this Ob I would think would be the obvious choice, which was an older one-eyed cat that like went after people. Yeah. No, here's this little teeny tiny itty bitty cat. This is the cat that you need. And she totally came in and immediately punched the dog in the face. And she has just <laughs> sort of been, she has been a tank girl in this house. So, uh, <laughs> I think it's very fitting. It was like trying to find, not that a cat gives a fuck what their name is, but okay, her name is Rebecca. What's something that we can add on to that? Oh, okay. Her name is Rebecca Buck. Tank girl. There we go. Yeah. So. <laughs> I don't know if we've ever actually talked about that on the show or not, but. No, I don't think we have. I mean, Amanda's a huge Tank Girl fan. She's probably got a bunch of the comics. And, you know, our first copy as a couple was her copy of the movie. Yeah. I, I have since upgraded to the Shout Factory mm -hmm. Blu-ray that came out a year or two ago. Yeah, that's what I have as well. So. I know. And I, this had been the first time I'd seen it in a while. And, and first time I'd seen it on Blu-ray. And I'm like, oh, wow, it looks so much better. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It deserved, it deserved the upgrade. Because when you have something like this that has so many of these scenes that are the comics and like those graphic panel cuts. And even just when it's not like that, you have the color palette. Um you know, and just the richness of the landscape or whatever, you know, it, it needs to have more of a, um, you know, it needs to have more of just that clarity. Yeah. It needs to be a fresh copy, not a ratted worn out copy that you found underneath somebody's couch. Yeah the the clarity of it because uh, they did do like you said uh, um the production designer was uh Catherine hardwick and all the other creative people that worked on it, like stan stan winston's company mm -hmm. and all this stuff really earns high definition <laughs> or yeah there there are some movies yeah. that i don't think i would ever buy in high def just because some movies should be grainy and fuzzy in spots and stuff like that. And that, this is not one. This is a comic book movie. This is a bright drought for 11 years. A lot of sand, a lot of red, a lot of, you know, the terms more. But, you know, it, it looks like it's dry where they are. It looks like it's hot and dry most places. And then they drain take all the color out and it's whites and blues inside malcolm mcdowell's torture corporate corporation like the torture wing of the corporation with the pipe and all that other shit well the pipe the ice room even the uniforms like the inmate uniforms are blue like they're different blue than I don't think Malcolm McDowell is wearing black in 
if he is wearing black, it may be like tinged a blue mm. or that may, I can't tell that may just be lighting. Could be, but it, you know, but it doesn't seem like it. It's just, it, you know, everything in there is right in his space is very blue. A lot of fluorescent lights or things being lit mm -hmm. from screens. What to a lot of blue, this. a lot yeah. of blue gray too. Oh, the the generals or the captains, their uniforms are kind of blue gray. Well, their uniforms, and then also when they're like the color of just like the walls of the areas, like where the inmates have to go shower or go, you know, down into like the mine type area and work. It's it all has this very blue gray kind of hue. Like all the walls. In addition to the dust that's around. Yeah, beautiful movie. Does not feel 104 minutes long. Really. I would say I mean, there's probably no. some parts that could have maybe been sped up, but also the with the with the comic that that's a way to guide the viewer with, you know, if you have a bunch of little little panels with not a lot of words, you know, you read that a lot faster. And then when you've got a big double uh, two page layout with barely any dialogue on it it's it slows the pace down so i think they're still kind of yeah I, I i couldn't tell you anything to cut out of the movie but i could probably say that maybe there's some parts that take a little bit longer maybe some of the convincing the rippers yeah i don't know um now did have you ever there's so apparently the studio when this was released in the studio i mean in the in the theater there was like kind of a post coital scene between booga and tank girl that showed like more of them in bed and then it was cut out for at least some dvd and blu-ray release of it have you ever seen it with that scene in there I have, and there's I have a similar. Too. Okay, uh, there is a. It looks like a scene that I've seen in the comic book, also. Yeah. Of them laying in bed talking. Right. It's stupid that they cut it out. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't understand it. I've. Um. I think. There's one. Uh, Tank Girl is on. One of those you can watch movies for free, mm -hmm. but there's commercials apps. Right. Uh, it's not. It's not Tubi. It's Pluto. Some... Hmm. Is it Pluto TV or something? I think it might be Pluto. I think the version on Pluto has that scene. Okay. Because, um, like when we first. Now, uh, a couple years ago, when we mentioned doing it, I just threw it on one time when I was editing an episode just to refresh my memory mm -hmm. to it some. And I'm pretty sure that scene was on there. But yeah, I, I don't really understand why they cut it out. I don't know if I mean, it's unheard of now for a comic book movie not to have a scene in the credits or at the end of the credits at the I, very least, if they didn't think that it fit inside the movie, they could have just popped it there and everybody would have been cool with it. Yeah. I, I, I don't get why studios start chopping like certain things sometimes and it's disappointing. 
I mean, this is still, I still enjoy this movie. I think it's a, a good, you know, movie. Great. I mean, like, it's not fantastic because it's not, you know, of course there are, there's a, a certain different level of filmmaking when I can, when I call something a great movie, but you know what I mean? But yeah, uh, not like in my top 10 movies of all time or something, but this is one movie that I've always had fun with. It always makes me, you know, it always makes me feel good. You know, uh, yeah. it's, it's one of those that, and it, like I said, it, it also holds a certain place of nostalgia for me too. So that helps, but, um, you know, the soundtrack is so, is, yeah, I still have the soundtrack somewhere on CD. <laughs> oh, I think I have it digitally as well. But, and I still use the line, well, it's been swelled, but the swelling's gone down. <laughs> Come on. That's an amazing line. <laughs> oh, so much love for Tank Girl. I I feel like I I this isn't I mean, this is purely anecdotal, but out of curiosity, I've gotten more in the habit of posting on places when I'm watching a movie for a show, but not necessarily saying what show, just here's the movie. And Tank mm -hmm. Girl got almost as many reacts as The Crow. Yeah. And everybody loves The Crow. Right. I I think there is a lot of love for Tank Girl out there, but I don't like, like we said, I don't think it's universal. And I think there are a lot of people that if you said, hey, if you have you seen Tank Girl, they would think it's a meme or a video game. Which this would have been an awesome video game, a Tank Girl video game. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. I think it was just. Uh, I would I would be shocked if someone that I generally talk to a lot, not that I would think less of them, but I would just be like, I figured everybody I know likes Tank Girl. Well, and I just feel I just feel not enough people have seen it. And I feel more people would be into it if they saw it. <laughs> Pretty much. So we're bringing, we're reminding everybody that Tank Girl is out there. It is yes. something to be thankful for. And yes. <laughs> thankful for. <laughs> oh, thank you, Darren. Thank you for bringing <laughs> that back. You did come up with that great. This is our Thanksgiving tanks giving episode because we can't do any standard uh holiday shows no we can't it's not our style when we do it it's because we couldn't think of a more clever idea or more puntastic idea <laughs> well, we do we do like our puns around here and we do like our bad puns but yes um well, so I guess we're wrapping it up on our discussion about this. Am I right or not? I mean, we could go on for another couple hours if if we like. I mean, we, we really could. Well, what's it? Just let's one last thing before we to wrap it up. What what are some of your favorite lines or one favorite line? Oh man, by one of even my even if favorite... you have multiple favorite lines. The first one that comes to mind is I, I mentioned the battle of wills between mm -hmm. Tank Girl and Kess right. Kessler. Yeah. But when she gets him so mad that he's going to kill her and she just says, I win, which is what he it hurts him more than so many other yeah. things yeah. that he can't break her. And she's saying fuck you i'm ready to die with two words and you know tank girl yeah. she'll use a lot of words when not that many are needed and just that i win right right that, that's my first favorite line from the movie 
And, no. Yeah. Um, there's some, I, I just, just, I, I don't know. Yeah. Like we said, keep going on. I don't want to butcher, butcher any of, of her jokes. Well, I, I mean, yeah, that's true. And, oh, and one thing I think we need to discuss before, um, we finish because we really haven't said, I mean, we talk about, we, we just talk about this, how it's water and power against those who are trying to come in, uh, or who are trying to illegally get water. Um, but, and, you know, or destroy the control, corporate control of the water. Um, but water and power, let's also just talk about what bad guys they are all around, not just Kesley. Um, uh, I mean, they're all about carrying out human trafficking, including labor and sex trafficking of, including of children. Um, and obviously murder we've kind of discussed, but the repeated sexual assault and sexual harassment, <laughs> the homophobia, like, you know, these, these are just, you know, less than nice people, obviously on, it's not just Kesley because look yeah. at the sergeant, the sergeant yeah, who's Ooh. after jet girl, like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm glad that she got that moment at the end. Right? Yeah. I told you I don't want to. Like it. Yeah. Blam, motherfucker. Uh, what was another one from? Spoiler Tank alert, Girl? folks. But yeah. I mean, it it just it's a total moment of yeah karma. But it's just she's like, what do you not understand about the word no? Like. <laughs> Sorry, you don't you you don't get it again. Get another chance. <laughs> yeah, to just and go pr about your day. <laughs> prison guards, prison guards, female like, inmates. Yeah, still like, happening. Exactly. It's not going to get better in the apocalypse. Oh no, absolutely. And when we have seen, like, well, when we a throwback to when we did bitch planet okay that comic that dystopian comic it did have um guards you know sexually assaulting inmates so we know it happens now but yeah so other yeah, comics are already people. showing it too yeah awful awful people hoarding a natural resource that should be free while doing what people with absolute power do yeah Don't well anyway it's a crime to keep animals you know, yeah well, that, and that's the other thing kill the animal what what did the animal do to you? I mean, like, uh, I understand. I'm sure they left it in the sand too, not even eating it. Well, it, precisely. Or even using the water that they could have taken from that animal's blood. Think about that. They're even wasting the water. Uh. The bad I, guys in Tangro are bad. In their yes. fucked up mind. I'm just pointing out using their fucked up logic, right? Right. That's they're still they're they don't care. It's they're just so cold. You know, no. We're just gonna ruthlessly kill these people. Like, I mean, they just shot down all these people. See, and I'm giving them a bad idea of <laughs> how they can get more water because they're look at how many people they're just going around to and killing and with like shooting them and then they're like 
not even collecting their water afterwards from each individual body. They're wasting water. That's a wasteful think, resource. And also, I wonder, I mean, they, they're probably pushing some of that artificial scarcity. I mean, they're, I'm sure they're wasteful, but, you know, yeah. if, they, if there really wasn't that much water, they would only kill people that way. But they've right. got water to waste. They've got water to do all this other shit. And so, yeah, they're they're doing that corporate thing of the artificial scarcity and, right. and pun punishing people for breaking an imaginary rule. And animals. Yeah. And and also the animals is part of how like these this entire ecosystem is in this place. It is as well, because you need animals to help an environment thrive even after there have been these major eco you know ecological changes sure you're not going to have the you know all the same animals but that's i mean that's the this planet has worked that way over ages like it has been uncovered and, you know, and scientists, there's, I mean, there's, they're still uncovering it. Yes. But it's been uncovered over the ages. I mean, you know, that throughout time, as the climate changes, so does the, so do flora and fauna that are there and that are thriving. Got a little bit bummed out oh, with our dystopia. I know we did. Sorry, bringing it down. But Tank Girl is still. This is this is the wrap up. I promise. But I wanted to just like say like guys are you know bad news, and so it is so easy <laughs> to root for their deaths. <laughs> yes, they gave me a villain I really wanted to watch die. Right. Exactly. And. Sometimes you need that, and like Darren and I were kind of saying before we started recording, is that we've kind of been bummed out politically, sociopolitically this week listening to news. So um, I guess we needed this a little bit to, yeah. I mean, still touched on some of the, some serious issues, but we... Uh, we at least were able to get some joy and fun in there. Tank Girl and Jet Girl didn't give up. We can't. Yeah. Well, and the Rippers as well. Yeah. Booga and Ice T. <laughs> Jack Kerouac. Jack Kerouac. Bob Smith. The code word will be on the road, dig. On the road. <laughs> it's probably, yeah. <laughs> uh fun movie a lot of familiar which, faces yeah which by names. the way the the one that played jack kerouac he had originally come in to audition for some like other character some random character they were gonna have and he brought his saxophone in and yeah. they asked and it, they ended up rewriting they doing it or whatever but they hadn't that's why he's playing the saxophone in there and they kind of yeah changed it a little cool. so he could play his sax <laughs> gotta play to your strengths yeah uh, that's that's neat cool well let us take a brief break and um so we can get a quick little bit of water and then we'll come back to close out the ship be right back Fay ray ah! janet lee adrian king heather langenkamp amy Steele. That weatherman who saw the cockroach. That, oh my god, that is the ship! Oh my god! Jamie Lee Curtis. <laughs> and you. Come on. You know you wanna. 
Let her rip. Oh my God. There. Now don't you feel better. You are now officially a Scream Queen. Come play with the rest of us at www.screamqueens.com. That's Queens with a Z. Or you could subscribe to us on iTunes. Either way, it's going to be fucking fabulous. The Scream Queens Horror Podcast. It's where horror gets bent. And we are back. So, okay, now, after we both recommend Tank Girl, we are and ready to have a happy Thanksgiving. We are looking forward to next month. And as you know, dear listeners, and well, maybe those of you who have come along since last December (laughs) are just realizing this for the first time. We don't do typical um, December holiday type episodes. No, we, we can't be normal. Right, Darren? No, I I think if we tried, it would sound very strange. So yeah, we did stuff. Hebrew hammer. I did before you got here. That was, yeah, that was the very first one uh we did clue last year i remember that and we did what the ice harvest the year before yeah and then there is there another year in there no 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 back to hebrew hammer yeah um yeah i'm pretty sure yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) um You know, anyway. I, I was a fan before I joined the show, but my memory is a bit easier and still not that all concrete when it comes to me centric things. Because we did uh, Shakes the Clown in December 2018, according to my thing, and then The Big oh. Doll House. So, yeah. Anyway, we haven't really done a Christmas. Christmas movie it's not really our thing yeah exactly we we just it's not our usual thing so um well this year and at least in one scene of the movie it's connected to Christmas and the holidays uh, we are going to cover the John Waters movie female trouble yes that's it folks and um you better not forget my cha-cha heels. That's all I've got to say. <laughs> oh, it, it just came to me. Do we want to say anything about what we're planning to do in January to give people time to do the reading? Or do we want to wait until the traditional announcing the next episode in the next episode? Um. Well, it, if you want to announce it, that's fine. Well, are we going to do the reading? I guess we, we will be doing the reading. And we yes, I don't know. It reading. might be taking longer than usual. So just just in case for that, and uh, we're we're ready to commit to doing this. Yes, because I don't want to make yes. everybody. Not that it's a bad book or anything. I think, but if it was like I read I read that and it's not even on the test, uh, we you know we usually do a little bit more of a darker winter movie in January and sometimes February (laughs) because, you know, Vanessa lives in New York and I live in Ohio in in the Midwest, uh, not too far from the Great Lakes in Canada. Uh, So we've we've got a long winters. And anyway, why do you care about that is because (laughs) we will be doing Misery, Stephen King's Misery. Which, uh, who, oh God, Rob Reiner directed the movie, right? I believe so. Yeah. So. So, the, yes, we will be doing both the book and the movie. Yeah. And the, the reading is Kathy a little bit Bates. longer. Yeah. Kathy Bates, James Kahn, and 
I I don't know. And we'll, we'll get into that then. Uh, it's been a long time since I've seen female trouble. Uh, you Same know, the, with me. I'm the looking John forward Waters to it. Is, is, I think you very well could have given me my copy of Female Trouble. If I'm not mistaken. And if you haven't, I bought one just knowing that someday that you would want me to watch it. Um, I don't believe I gave that to you, but maybe I did. Okay. Who knows? Uh, I'll I'll look. It won't be autographed to me or anything, but I will go look. I think I have it already. <laughs> Still in the cellophane, though. The Criterion. It's been that long since I've seen it. I think the first time, the last time I saw it, it was on HBO Turner Classic Movies or a VHS. I haven't seen it since I bought the Criterion. Uh, edition of it so okay, so we're i'm anxious to see what it looks like well and sounds like now <laughs> yeah so yeah that'll be that'll be december and like we told you about january um kind of a month in advance just because i, I know i i need that extra time to get the reading in so well that's a you know maybe a that book's not super long, but it's longer than some of the ones that we've done. And, you know, we do recognize people get busy at the end of the year, beginning of the year. So. Yeah. You know, family uh, get family get togethers for various reasons, work stuff, whatever. Schedules are crazy. So. Goodreads says that it's 420 pages long. Yeah. We usually try to stay below 400 pages and even 400, you know, I feel can be pushing it. So. Yeah. So. Eh, yeah. That, that way, especially since the movie is pretty close to the book. I, I really don't, I haven't done any surveying, but I don't know if people skip the reading sections, if they haven't read the book and, mm -hmm. and whatnot, like some people will with, movies they haven't seen but this is a lot closer of an adaptation than a decent amount of <laughs> stephen king adaptations well so. right right um anyway um do you have any anything else to add before we say thanks for listening um, I can't think of anything else. I'm excited about both December and January's um, selections. And I'm excited about getting my copy of Tanks, Tank, I was going to say Tanks Girl, but <laughs> <laughs> of Tank Girl in the mail um, or whatever, you know, slow boat to Brooklyn, it's on. Um, <laughs> it was mailed from Brooklyn to Lexington, Kentucky, to somewhere in Florida, back to Albany, to Alaska, <laughs> <laughs> back down to New Jersey, and then finally to three places in Brooklyn before to my post office. <laughs> Strapped to a raccoon. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, but I am going to be reading that, so I will... You can't see me, but I'm saluting. I will be reporting, you know, next time about that. Cool. Uh, I wonder you... if any of the things on my digital copy are in the physical copy. Because you okay. have to see how 1980s punk these people look in, in the pictures of yeah. like behind the scenes stuff. But that will be then. This okay. is now. Uh, thank you, everybody. I hope you have had a happy Thanksgiving because uh, I don't know if anybody's going to be hearing this before Thanksgiving. But all yeah, think of the indigenous people. Think of the think of the rippers. Think of the water you're drinking. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Fight the power company. 
<laughs> fight the water and power company yeah. fight the water and power company yeah yeah ba 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 vd is for everybody well i yeah it's not quite time yet for it no. to be copyrighted uh, the copyright to expire damn i can't start singing cole porter yet oh not yet so you have been another asked... seven years i'll start singing let's do it there we go <laughs> bye bye I think I think somebody asked me once if you sang the song on the the like the VD song. Yeah. Yeah. For the record, no. <laughs> Thank you for listening to another episode of the VD Clinic. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you can find us at Twitter at VD Clinic Pod or reach us via email at vdclinicpod at gmail.com. We also have a Facebook group, VD Clinic Podcast. We'd love to hear your feedback, suggestions, and more.